And the simple example I can give you is that if you, if you cut your finger and say this is summer and you keep working in the garden and don't, do not put any antibiotics, you will get infected, right? See, the physical factors fail, chemical factors fail. Now the bacteria have direct access into your body through the cut, correct? And most of the time, the inflammatory response is going to be kicked in and you will see these, you know, swelling of the finger if the cut is there, correct? And this swelling is what? There are cells, and I'm going to show you how these cells look like. They somehow know that, okay, there is a breach in the security at some point, and they all rush there. So the reason you see the swelling is because number of these immune cells at that specific place has gone really, really high, right? So these are called the cellular factors. And the cells which are involved in this these are amoeba-like cells. I'm sure everybody knows what amoeba is, correct? And these are called macrophages. And the macrophages are really hungry cells. What they do practically is eat up anything which is coming from the outside. And once they eat it up, it is digested. And then, you know, the chemicals which are in there are going to contribute to the, to the B part of the slide, which we call the adaptive immunity. Makes sense, correct? So, once the innate immunity has done its job, the adaptive immunity kicks in, and this is very, very specific. Again, adaptive immunity could either be mediated by antibodies, you are familiar with this word, right? Uh, if not, I'm going to explain it to you later, correct? Or, so if this, there are cells, lymphocytes, these are called B cells, and they make these antibodies, and these antibodies are extremely specific. So for example, if it's a polio virus, you will have anti-polio antibodies. And these antibodies will neutralize only polio virus and nothing else. See, now the specificity is kicking in. Follow me? So, uh, these are the B cells. The mm -hmm. other type of cells in, in the adaptive immune response are for the T cells. It's one of the T cells which is infected with the HIV, right? And these T cells also mediate immunity, and this is called T cell mediated immunity and this is B cell mediated immunity. Some people call it humoral immunity and the cellular immunity. Now let's see how the immune system looks like. It's really a unique system in our body. See, if you look at all the physiological systems that we have in our body, say the circulatory system, say the nervous system, you can see there is a sort of structural organization. You know what I'm saying? That you can dissect it out and say, okay, this is the circulatory system, this is the nervous system, this is the reproductive system. You know, you have all these sexy organs connected with tubules, and you can say this is the reproductive system, right? Immune system is really not organized at the structural level, and it's something unique about the immune system. Immune system, what we have is a group of cells, so many different types of cells, all of them are originating in the bone marrow, and from bone marrow they come into the blood, and the, from blood they go to wherever they are needed, okay? So this is the group of the cells which actually contribute to the adaptive immune system. Now all these cells actually emerge from a stem cell in the bone marrow. Now remember, stem cells are stem cells and stem cells are so different. The most potent stem cell that we know is a fertilized egg. You can make a human being out of it, you can make a puppy out of it, right? You can make a chicken out of it. Then if you look at the structure at the organismal level, you have all these physiological systems. So it's a circulatory system. Now there's a stem cell for the circulatory system. Follow me? Then if you look at the circulatory system, there's a heart and there are you know, all these different uh, plumbing in there, and all these are the different cells. So for every one of them, there are different type of uh, 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 stem cells. So when people talk about the stem cells, it is not as simple as it sounds uh, in the TV or the newspapers, right? So this, this stem cell gives rise or differentiate into two other type of stem cells. One is called the lymphoid stem cell, and the other one is called myeloid stem cell, okay? 
Now, although this figure appears to be very complicated, but I'll make it very simple for you. All the lymphocytes that we have in our blood actually are coming from lymphoid stem cells. All the remaining cells, eosinophils, basophils, mast cells, you know, RBCs, platelets, all these are myeloid, these are myeloid cells. Okay? Now when we look at the lymphocytes, there are two types of lymphocytes which have not been shown here. One are called T helper cells and the others are called T cytotoxic cells. Actually, this is really not a fiction. We can, in the lab, identify every single cell because the type of the proteins which are present on the surface of these cells give us the clue what type of cells we are looking at. So we don't look at the shape of the cell. We look at the proteins which are present on the surface of the cell, right? Now, those of you who are familiar with HIV, you know what HIV does. HIV infects T helper cells, right? And once the T helper cells are killed, what happens? Because, you know, the immune system is interdependent and integrated, you have knocked out a single component, and if this component has been knocked out, here it goes, the immune system doesn't work. So really the symptomatology that we see in case of HIV is not caused by the HIV itself. Because a person in Kalamazoo suffering from HIV infection may have a different set of symptoms than somebody who lives in San Francisco you know, or some other city in Africa. What happens is when the immune <coughs> system has been knocked out, we have a lot of microorganisms which are present in the environment. Now, you know, we are defenseless. So they are going to cause whatever infection. And the symptoms that you see are because of the, they are called opportunistic infections. Now, opportunistic infections are not always infections. We see, for example, you know, you look at the cancer. Uh, I think in layman's term, cancer is growth for the sake of growth. Okay? And if you know, uh, every darn thing that we deal with in this life, including barbecue and broccoli, has some sort of carcinogens. You can't go into the sun because there's a UV light there. See what I'm saying? <laughs> so really, we are bombarded with the carcinogens day in and day out, but only few of us get the cancer. Why this is so? It's so because the, once the cell has been transformed into a cancerous cell, the surface proteins change on the surface of this cell, and the immune system is going to recognize it as something which is not ours, and it will reject it, right? So the immune system does contribute to the cancer too. So what we see, people who are suffering from HIV, the rate of cancer goes up in these things. It's a very bad disease to have, there's no doubt in my, my mind. You know, even if you take B cell lymphoma, this is the cancer of the B cells, one of those lymphocytes that I told you, right? Uh, uh, in normal population, it is about 0.5%. But if you look at the people who are suffering from HIV infections or some other kind of immunosuppressive problems, uh, that rate goes up tenfold. It is about 5%. Similarly, autoimmune diseases, you know, like Hashimoto thyroiditis, like diabetes, like MS, you know, these are the autoimmune diseases. Why are they called autoimmune diseases? Because the immune system, whose function is to really differentiate between self and non-self, or what is called self and foreign, forgets how to do this. Because the immune system is supposed to destroy the foreign 